from the nation's capital, this is the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast with your host, Rob Snowett. This is the 282nd episode of the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. My name is Rob Snow White. How awesome would it be to take a road trip across the country, living out of a minivan, trying to catch the state fish of each state? Well, it's happening right now. And I came across an article in the Bangor Daily News last week titled, With College Gone Remote, Two Teens Hit the Road for a Gap Year Fishing Adventure Instead. I tracked the guys down. And they agree to come on the podcast. This is my first interview with Luke Conson and Dan Balzerak. I am calling on my podcast listeners and social media followers to help these guys out in any way. If you can give them a dry place to sleep, feed them a hot meal, maybe let them do laundry, take them out to a local spot, show them the ropes, give them a casting lesson. They're not really fly anglers. Anything you can do to help them would be highly and greatly appreciated by me and them. Additionally, if you want to give them a monetary donation, there's a link to a GoFundMe on their social media. And now that it's starting to get a little cold in September, you're going to want to get your fire pit going, and you still have time to save 25% off your solo stove purchase. Click the link on my website or my social media bios to go to Solo Stove. Every purchase you make helps support my small business. We were at our neighbor Tigger and Rugs' house last Saturday night for a little fire pit on the driveway. We brought our bonfire with us, and sat on the end of the driveway watching those flames dance. They were on the other end of the driveway, dodging ashes and embers, swatting smoke out of their faces, and you know they went home stinking of smoke that night, not us. Experience the solo stove today. Trust me on it. We've got Luke and Daniel. Do you guys want to individually introduce yourselves? I'm Luke, and I am Daniel. And, yeah, we are... We're catching every U.S. state fish right now. All right. So we'll get into that. Let's find out the background of, of who you guys are and how you came to be. And where are you today? So we, earlier today, we fished Allegheny State Park and caught uh, the New York State fish. And now we are friend's house in Niagara. Very cool. All right. So you guys are actually local to me, correct? We're Northern Virginia natives here? Yes. yes. Yeah, we both... We both grew up there. In Oakton? Yeah. Yeah, what, we live five minutes from each other. Which high school did you go to? We both went to Dominion Christian School, uh, so a private school in Reston. Okay. I'm trying to think of where. Is that off of Sunset Hills? Yeah. It's, it's right there. It's in Isaac Newton Square. Yeah. Did you know the story about that place with the Ebola virus, right? Yeah. yeah. And the monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. And since you guys may have been gone, they've opened a Wawa in Vienna. Yeah, I I, that. I that opened like a, the week before I left, and I never got to go. But we have seen a lot of Wawas on our way, so it's good to have Wawas. I'm I'm over sheets. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, how'd you guys get into fishing in the first place? There's plenty of opportunities around here. What's the What's the reason that got you into it? Where'd your passion come from? I'll go first. I I've been fishing for as long as I can remember. I was really, really into it when I was younger from, I don't even probably, I mean, I've got pictures of when I was, you know, three holding bass and then was really into it until probably about the beginning of high school. And then just got really busy and, and kind of dropped it off of it. And then uh, this past year, pretty much, I've just gotten super into it. Just realized how good of an area we actually live in to go fishing. And so, and then especially, you know, once school got out and everything was online, I just fished pretty much every day. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where mine comes from. For me, it's, it's kind of similar. I grew up fishing a lot at Burke Lake with my dad, who actually, I, I'm not sure if Luke told you this, but you actually taught my dad how to fly fish. Really? So, yes, you did. You, <laughs> the the he, name sounded familiar. I didn't look it up. What was that? The, the last name is definitely familiar. Yeah. So I, di I didn't know until I, s I told my dad I was going on a podcast and I told him who, and he said, yeah, I met him through Bar Brava, I think, in DC United, and you taught him how to fly fish. So, But yeah, I grew up with my dad fishing a lot on Burke Lake, and we used to go to cabins a lot, but similar to Luke, in high school, 
time was a lot more crunched and didn't really have a lot of time to fish, but this is really the perfect opportunity to get back out and get back into it. Well, you guys have been working your butts off for years trying to get into college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's not really going too well. I think uh, this this is definitely better than taking online college classes, for sure. Do you guys have, other than Burke Lake, other favorite local spots that you're willing to talk about? (laughs) Yes. So there's a couple spots. My best, I'm not going to say where, but there's a couple ponds in the area that are really good for largemouth. But, I mean, pretty much any pond in in Northern Virginia or Virginia in general is going to have a pretty good population of largemouth. I recently... I've gotten really into catching big catfish on the Potomac and actually the tidal basin. So that is one spot that if, you know, I'm trying to go catch a big catfish, I will, you know, go out, get out to the tidal basin and, and you're almost guaranteed a couple big blues and a couple channels there. So that's probably my favorite spot to fish right now. Are you guys in any local fishing clubs, Potomac River Smallmouth Club, anything like that? Nope. Uh, no, neither of us are, are in anything like that. Okay. And what is your main style of fishing? This is a fly fishing podcast, but we're not going to hold it against you guys. If you're using conventional (laughs) on your road trip. Yeah, we, we both are, are pretty much only, (laughs) we only use spinning tackle. I have a fly rod. We did a little bit of fly fishing in Maine, but definitely spinning tackle is, is our go-to. All right. So we need some listeners that might be in the areas you're passing through to take you out and give you some casting lessons. Yes. Yeah. If, if you want to teach me how to fly fish, please be my guest. That would be amazing. Yes. Where did the idea for this road trip come from? A little bit of background. In, we're, we're both going to go to Clemson, and we're going to be roommates there. And then at the end of July, they announced that the first month, of classes was going to be online and knowing that they probably would stay online for a majority of the year we both decided to defer and uh, we weren't really sure defer till next fall we weren't really sure what we were going to do you know we we're both thinking of, of trying to do some traveling or something like that just make the most of this year and then i was actually in down in north carolina uh, with my family at the beach for a week and we, we had done a, a good bit of fishing down there. We went out on a deep sea boat and then we went inland a bit. And, and then we were at dinner one night, we were just talking about, you know, what my options were for this year. And, and my dad was like, well, you could travel around uh, the country and catch fish. And, and from that idea, you know, we kind of went to, oh, you could catch a fish in every state, look that up. A couple people have done that. And then we, we were like, well, what if it's the state fish? And we couldn't find anyone that had done anything like this before. So that's kind of where the idea came up. And then, you know, later that night I called Daniel and I was like, hey, I've got, I've got this idea. He was all in. His parents, parents were, not so much, but took a bit of convincing. But And here we are. Now. Yep. So that's, it kind of, it came together pretty quickly. And, you know, two weeks later we, we were out on the road. So that was the beginning of August. So that's where the idea came from. You know, we just wanted to, to uh, you know, mix traveling and fishing and do something, you know, doing something that no one has or that no one has documented doing before is, is a pretty cool opportunity. Yes. And I'm going to live vicariously through you guys while you're doing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we've got some people that um, actually some guy reached out to me and, and told me that, you know, we had inspired him to, to do his own little mini version of this. So. So that, that was really cool. I'm kind of hoping that, you know, some more people get out and just, that's kind of what we're trying to do here is uh, along with, you know, doing something cool. We're trying to, you know, fishing is, is a great opportunity in the outdoors, especially with everything going on right now. And uh, the more people we can get into it, the better. Is there an official name for the road trip? Ooh, um, well, we've got an Instagram account. I don't think we haven't really come up with an official name for it. So yeah, that's a good, we should, we should, we got to work on that. Where have you been? Follow the map of where you guys have driven and you have the benefit of modern technology. My brother and I drove cross country in 96. We had paper maps and we had CD players in the car. (laughs) Yeah, we, we are lucky. We, we actually have had to use paper maps a couple times, you know, up in Maine, there's very little cell reception. So we have to do some old school navigating there but so far so we we drove up from 
Virginia into Maryland, and we caught a striped bass there. And then we went to Delaware, and we went out on a boat and caught a weak fish, or I think sea trout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we went to New Jersey and caught a brook trout. And then we drove through like New York City, uh, Connecticut state fishes and American shad. And if those run in the spring and then the season closes and you really can't find them. So we went, we're coming back to Connecticut in the spring. And then we went to Rhode Island, caught a striped bass. Uh, Massachusetts caught an Atlantic cod. New Hampshire was also striped bass. Maine was landlocked salmon. Vermont, Vermont has a warm water state fish and a cold water state fish. The warm water was a walleye. So we tried for a couple days to catch that from the shore, you know, basically had lines out for like 12, 15 hours a day, just trying to get as deep as we could. But without being able to troll for it, that's that's a pretty tough fish to catch. So we decided after a couple days of that to go and try and catch the cold water state fish, which is also a brook trout. And then we... Yesterday, we were up in the Adirondacks, and then today we drove down to Allegheny and caught the New York State freshwater fish, which is a brook trout. So that's what we've done so far. Tomorrow, we will drive down to Pennsylvania, and and that'll be our 10th state. Nice. Anything else besides the state fish that you're looking forward to in each state? I'd say we've, we've just been pretty lucky to see a lot of really cool areas, especially night fishing for that walleye in Vermont. We got to see probably more stars than we've ever seen. And just goes back to what Luke was talking about, just seeing the outdoors in a time where a lot of stuff is shut down, I think is a really great opportunity. And that's probably what we're looking forward to most in each state, just seeing the beauties of each state. Yeah, we've, you know, we've gotten to, gotten to like we, I think it was Connecticut. We saw like a boat that went out with the first nuclear sub you know, we got to drive through Boston. There's a lot of history there. We're, we're going to go see Niagara Falls uh, maybe later tonight or tomorrow morning. There's just, you know, targeting these fish is, has, tends to take us to, like, the coolest natural areas in the state uh, so far. So, you know, along with the fishing, which is obviously pretty great, we get to see a lot of cool stuff that we wouldn't have otherwise gotten to see. What are you listening to between stops besides this guy? on the radio oh yeah so we you know we've listened to probably every song on spotify we've also gotten into uh jordan peterson who is he's like a he's a psychoanalyst and he has some really really fascinating lectures and there he's uh you know he's starting to put his lecture series on on spotify and he's got a podcast so that that has kept us entertained. We've done a lot of that. A lot of Joe Rogan podcasts as well. Yeah, he's got some interesting guests. I've heard about this Joe Rogan. I'm familiar yeah. with him. He's, I don't even know what, how he really got famous, but he now has, I mean, he's got all sorts of guests. He had like Neil deGrasse Tyson on. He's had Jordan Peterson on a couple times. He's got, you know, he had Mike Tyson. He's, uh, he's got a big variety of guests and they just kind of talk about whatever and it's pretty fascinating so he was the host of fear factor about 20 years ago that's the first i came across him yeah so he's i guess he's uh he's moved on to mainly podcasts and he's into ufc as well i think he does commentating for that now yeah all right any issues with the the covid so far and encountering people you You pull up next to a car of like cute looking girls and then they lower their masks (laughs) and you're like oh We haven't run into too much of that yet, (laughs) but it's, you know, we've had to deal with this. A lot of stores have really weird hours now because of COVID. So that's been one thing we tend to, you know, we fish as long as we can. So we don't always get to our nighttime stop at a decent hour. So a lot of things will be shut down. I would also say one of the bigger issues has been a lot of places marked on Google Maps as 24 hours have turned out to not be open 24 (laughs) hours and sometimes even closing at like 730, which has been a bit of an issue. Yeah, Um, I think that's probably the biggest COVID struggle we've had so far. You know, most we spend most of our time outside, so that's not very impacted by that at all. But it's just, you know, when we need we need food or something and and stuff is closed, that's been that's probably been our biggest COVID problem. What what car are y'all driving? 
It's a 2013, I think, Honda Odyssey. So I've got a turtle turtle back on there and yeah, it's just carrier filled with fish and rods and all the seats are out. <laughs> nice. So yeah, tell us about the vehicle, how it's organized and we'll start talking about the gear that you packed. Organization wise, it is not very organized. We do our best to keep it, you know, we've got we have all the seats taken out except for the front two obviously. So we've got, you know, we've got like sleeping bags, we've got a food tub that is empty so we need to restock on that. And then we've got some camping gear. And then the, the rest of it is, is just mainly fishing stuff. We've got all the rods laid down the middle, bungee corded together so they don't rattle around and, and fall. And then we've got a big tub of uh, with, you know, smaller containers just filled with different kinds of fishing stuff. You guys got sleeping bags in there and a bed in case you're it's raining one night? So we actually, most of our nights that, not most, all of the nights that we haven't spent uh, at someone's house, we, we just sleep in the car. We just lay the seats all the way back. They go basically flat. And then we find, uh, you know, most Walmarts will allow you to park yes. overnight. Um, some Walmarts don't. And we've run into that a couple times and have had to, you know, pull into an Amtrak station or if there's a Cabela's or a Bass Pro around, those also allow overnight parking. Yes, I believe yeah. the Cracker Barrel will allow parking mm -hmm. overnight as well. Yeah. yeah, they do too. Unfortunately, there are not too many Cracker Barrels like up north. You know, we've got a we've got a list of, of places that we can park overnight. Um, so we just we go find one of those, just lay the seats down, pull out the sleeping bags, and then you know that way there's there's no pack up time in the morning. We just get going as quickly as we can. Who snores the most? Luke. No, Daniel. It goes on and off. Anyone talk in their sleep? I don't think either of us talk in our sleep, no. No. That would be bad. <laughs> what did you forget to pack for this road trip? We need more food. Yeah, we definitely need more food. Maybe even maybe even some more gear. We've had to stop at Bass Pro a couple times, which has been sort of out of the way, but... Honestly, I, don't, I think we did a decently good job of packing from the couple yeah. of days preparation we had. Yeah, we, we got this thing going pretty quick, and I, I think we, we probably brought most of the stuff we need. We didn't really anticipate that even though it's, you know, 65 during the day up north, it's like 30 at night. We don't have super warm clothes right now, but, you, you know, we, we managed. Be sure to sleep with a hat on. I sleep uh, with gloves on in the car, and I usually pull like a blanket over me on my sleeping yeah. bag. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I kind of, I normally like put a shirt over my head or something because the Walmart parking lots are normally pretty like safe. Sometimes there's even a like security car going around or something, but they're also pretty well lit. So, got to put something over your face there. I use a buff for that. I fold my buff four times, and it covers my eyes. Oh, mm. yes, it's a good tip. Yeah. And, you know, you can only turn your underwear inside out once and, and wear it. <laughs> it doesn't go a third day when you put it right side out again. We figured that out. <laughs> I did see a funny video online of a woman who bought a bathing suit that dissolves in water for her boyfriend. And he went in the, the ocean and it just dissolved while he was wearing it. Maybe you could find disposable underwears, something like that. Something it's, like decomposable or something? Yeah. I assume you're not going to have laundry. We've had to stop. We actually, you know, we brought a decent amount of clothes and then we stop at a laundromat, you know, once a week or so, once every couple of weeks, whatever we need. So that we've had to do laundry a couple of times, but also for showering, Planet Fitness has this thing where you can get a one, a free one day pass to a, like every location one time. So if you live in the area, you can only do it once, but we've been, you know, we have not been in the same area two days in a row. So we basically, we get the shower for free, which is pretty nice. Yes. You're wearing flip-flops in there, I assume. Uh, Crocs. Yeah. Yes. So oh, excellent. All right. What about followers? Forrest Gump, when he was running cross country, had legions of fans following him. Anybody starting to follow you yet? You know, I don't know that I would call it legions. We've got... Over 500 followers on the Instagram, which is good. I have a Facebook, but I have really no idea how to operate that. So it's for I old assume, people. I assume exactly. some people uh, are following me there, but I, I really could not tell you how many. I've got, I don't know if you know about Fishbrain. Yes. Yes. I've got a page on there and I've got 
I've got some followers there. And Fishbrain actually read one of the articles that was written about us and reached out to me and asked if there was any way they can help. So they upgraded my account to the pro account. So now I can see exactly. That's awesome. It's super cool. That was, that was a very exciting email. And Fishbrain has been very helpful, especially with Striped Bass, where it's really all about, you know, getting on where a school is. And if you can find a school, you can get, you can get a couple fish. Uh, in Rhode Island and New Hampshire, Fishbrain was our friend with Striped Bass there. I do like the stripers. They're fun yeah, fish they're, to catch. They yeah. fight. We we got one blitz and bait fish over the weekend on the Occoquan. That was pretty nice. Really? Wow. Yeah. I do I like when they're blitzing. Whatever you're doing, just throw right into that mayhem and you'll catch a fish. Yeah, you don't even have to. I mean, you could probably throw an empty hook in there and get one. Right. So are you guys doing the northern route first just due to the time of year? So we... We did this, you know, we went up, did the Upper East Coast because that was kind of, it's like a more self-contained, it's like a loop. It's a self-contained loop. So, you know, I would, uh, we will be stopping back at home to prepare for the next leg for a couple of days, almost like a, a little trial run. And the plan was to then go and do the North border, hopefully before snowfall. That is not going to happen. This, you know, we, we kind of, we mapped this route out on best case scenario and we didn't always get the best case scenario. So it's taken us longer than we expected. I might be able to, we might be able to get a couple of the Northern States in before they completely lock up. But so, yeah, that was our plan. Took us, this first part took us a little bit longer than we expected. So we might have to rethink that a little bit, but you know, we can go back uh, next in the summer, the spring and, and do those States. So we've got all year. It's not too big of an issue. And by then, hopefully you will have people meeting you at the locations. You'll be superstars. Exactly. Yeah, that, that would be great. Especially Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for some of these Northern state, like Wisconsin, I believe is, is a muskie. Like if you, so we'll need someone to take us out for that. And hopefully we'll have someone, we'll be able to meet someone there who's willing to take us out. That would be pretty cool. And yeah, you know, we've, we've met up with a couple people and it's just been a really cool experience. Them just, you know, just fishing with people. So the more that happens, uh, the better, cause that's just a really cool experience. Very nice. Yeah. We need to get you as much hookups on doing this. Like I said, uh, I might have to join you guys at some point. Absolutely. Awesome. Please, please do. Okay, so what is the budget? How are you guys paying for this? Are you selling blood on the way? Are you collecting cans on <laughs> the side of the road? Idea. Maybe we should. So Daniel, want to give them your little stock? Oh yeah. We, we've been messing around in the stock market, nothing too much, what? but you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that actually selling blood might be a good idea. We have, we have a couple friends who do that and make a good amount of money doing that. But yeah, we haven't really figured out money. I think that's part of the trial <laughs> trial run of this Northeast yeah. trip. Yeah, Am we've I... got a GoFundMe, which is which is working well. Obviously. We'll have that up on on iTunes and everywhere else for people that want to throw some cash your way. Please do. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> that'd be really awesome. It's it's a it's not a super. You know, we sleep in the car, so we don't pay anything to sleep. Our main expenses right now are our gas, food, and fishing licenses. So it is not a super expensive trip, but I mean, we're traveling a lot of miles eating actually not a lot of food, but we are eating food. So and most, to go from, what'd you say? Most gas stations have instant hot boiling water and they'll really? pretty much be cool if you bring something in that's like instant mashed potatoes or instant soup and just want to top it off. So we've got, we had, we had a lot of ramen noodle packets that we have figured out that if you crush up the noodles and then mm -hmm. sprinkle the packet on top, um, it's actually like pretty good dry, but that is, we didn't even think of that. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah. My brother, when we were in Billings, Montana, bought some kind of pink meat at the grocery store. It was 25 cents for half a pound sliced. And I was like, dude, I'll just eat bread. <laughs> we had yeah. uh what did we eat driving cross country i can't even remember so long ago a lot of mcdonald's it was like dollar yeah. dollar meal stuff had just come out yeah mcdonald's just released um the a travis scott meal, sandwich the travis scott meal which is 
it's like six bucks for a big meal. So we, you know, McDonald's, we're trying not to eat McDonald's when we can. So you got the metabolism. You're young. That's true. That's true. You guys Um, missed out on supersized fries though. That was pretty key back in in the day. That'd be pretty clutch. But yeah, McDonald's subway, there's subways everywhere. So we, we, we normally try and get, you know, like a bagel or something in the morning or like a cliff bar and then just push through until dinner time and then eat a meal. What about your haircuts? You grown out anything crazy? Yeah. We haven't planned that out either. <laughs> I, right now we're just letting it grow. So that will probably continue. And that's not the biggest problem. What is the biggest problem? Catching the fish. Yeah. Yeah, true that. You guys yeah. are definitely going to have material for college when you've got to write papers and essays. And are you filming? Oh, yeah. You can make a documentary, anything like that? We might start a TikTok and vlog our way or something yeah. like that. Maybe we've, YouTube. We've had a couple of people tell us, you know, that we should get on, on YouTube and other social medias, like um, with videos and stuff. So we're, we're thinking about that. We're not thinking. Monetize. We, there, we will. So we're going to try and, and do something like that just to get it a little bit more coverage. You know, taking, you know, we're getting some footage and stuff too. I, I've got someone back home who, when I get, back from this first leg we're going to put together a little promo video so we're getting there we're pretty early on but it's definitely you know we got to start thinking about this thing as a whole so we're going to try and start videoing more of it which is you know that's our plan and other than the musky up north are there other fish that are going to pose a challenge to catch Um, you foresee some troubles or Hiccups well, in the road. Arkansas is an alligator gar, which yeah. <laughs> should be fun. There are a couple dinosaurs out there, but that, well, I, don't I don't really know. Arkansas is, is one of the ones that jumped out to me immediately because alligator gar is a very strange fish. But that I'm I'm excited to catch one of those. But that's I don't think that's going to be too easy. There's a lot of there's a lot of trout. You know, you get west and there's like Apache trout, golden trout, stuff like that which, you know, probably involves a decent amount of hiking, but that's not really a problem. And then, you know, there's there's a good amount of largemouth bass, uh, which is going to be fun because that's what we know how to do. So, you know, Georgia, Florida, those states, there's a lot of largemouth, a lot of catfish, so that's right up in our area of expertise. It's really just the unfamiliar fish, the ones that we don't have around us that I don't really know how hard it is to catch them, so... I think that's going to be our biggest, our most difficult areas are probably going to be out west, I would assume. And Florida is quite the long state. Are you just going to hop across the border or are you going to go deep into Florida? Go search out Florida man. I've had a, (laughs) we're going to try to avoid the Florida men, but we've got, so one guy that actually helped us get in touch with someone who writes for um, Anglish Journal, Uh, we got an article in there, but the guy that got me in touch with them, his name is Charlie Levine, and he wrote for, I'm not, I can't recall right now, but he wrote for a fishing magazine for a long time, and I still think he does that. Uh, but he lives down in Florida, and, and he told me, you know, when you come down here, fish with me. So planning on doing that, I'm not quite sure where he lives. Florida, we, we definitely are not going all the way down. We'll probably just kind of skim the top as much as we can. All right. Are you allowed to pick up hitchhikers with COVID? We with don't COVID, have, not not hitchhikers having COVID, but during COVID times, oh. are you allowed to like pick up people? Strict no no uh, hobos in the car. Yeah, we we actually I don't think they could sit in the car. Honestly. We we have no room, uh, which came in handy one time because we were at a Wawa in in Delaware, I think, and some guy came up to our door. It was it was like fifty degrees out. He was just dripping sweat and looked pretty crazy. And he said he locked himself out of his car and needed a ride 10 miles down the road. And we said, sorry, we have no room and, and just got out of there pretty quick. So <laughs> we, if we wanted to pick someone up, which we really don't, uh, we don't have room. So that has been our excuse. But, you know, 
not too many people are asking for rides right now with COVID. So we haven't had to deal with that too much. You got room for a mascot if you find a puppy or like, a, I don't know, a badger in Wisconsin? We, we chicken. Probably. We can rearrange. We can make room for it. We we passed a zoo last night that had red pandas, and we were thinking that that would be a good mascot. So if we can get our hands on a red panda or something along those lines, we will make room. There was an escaped one down in Ooh. Williamsburg or something about a month or two yeah. ago. Maybe we will have to go down there. Yeah. All right. Any issues with the car so far? So when my brother and I drove cross country, we had just left Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and the door chime turned on. The bing, bing, bing. And we finally got it fixed about six days later of driving to Seattle. All you heard all day was bing, bing, bing. And the, the car windows wouldn't open, and the speakers and the stereo didn't work. It's pretty awful. Any issues so far? We... So far, we've been good. Yeah. One of the one of the doors is kind of decides when it wants to work and when it doesn't. That has really been our only issue. We just hit like a hundred and I think on our way up, we hit one hundred sixty nine thousand miles on the car. So I assume that we will have some problems eventually. But so far, nothing yet. Just hoping that holds out. Any issues with condensation on the windows? In the morning, actually, when you're breathing. Uh, they're normally fogged up a little bit, but it's not too bad. We actually, go ahead. There's a lot of fog by the big lakes, like Champlain and stuff. But yeah, I don't think that's probably been our biggest weather issue. I would say in terms of driving at night, especially. Yeah. When you're sleeping in the car, you getting a lot of condensation. Anything freezing yet on the inside of the glass? We've had probably two nights below freezing, but. I think it just like dipped to 32 and then quickly, uh, well, also those nights we were out fishing until three, you know, it, we were outside for the coldest part. I think we probably got out of, you know, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, just in time because it was really starting to get cold at night. So we didn't actually have to deal with any ice, but I think we probably would have if we had stayed a little bit longer. I turned on the heat in our house today. It was 62 in the house this morning. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. It is getting cold. Winter is coming, as Robert Brathian would say. It's coming fast. It comes a lot faster up north than it does in Virginia. Yes. Now, you guys are, what, 18, 19? 18, both and, of us. 18. Is this your first taste of just freedom? Pretty much. You could say that, yeah. Yeah. At this, it's our first taste of freedom on this level for sure. That's pretty cool. Staying up late, eating junk food. What other things are you doing without your parents around that you're willing to talk about that they um, might hear about? I don't know. We eat a lot of gummy worms. Sour or regular? Regular. Regular. Only because sour is just not a sustainable food source. You can only eat like. You know, you can only eat one bag of those. But so it's hurting your tongue. The regular ones, you can just plow through probably four or five bags with no issues. So. And are those just expanding in your stomach and filling you up? Yeah, that's, you know, that's a meal. Some water as well. Water, coffee, gummy worms. Nice. Uh, what have you seen that's just bizarre to you? Any Besides the, the crazy sweaty man, you guys seem just... Bizarre things on the side of the road, different roadkill. We've seen some moose specifically, and I think we saw, oh, yeah, we, we saw two on the side of the road, and then we were looking for a, what what fish were we looking salmon. for? We were looking for a salmon, and we looked out over the, it was pretty picturesque, the horizon, it was sunset, and we saw two moose. These ones had antlers, the other ones, ones didn't. They were walking across the river because it was shallow enough, and that was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I know you guys aren't fly tigers because you didn't say you stopped to cut the moose up for hair. <laughs> the dead one. So that's that's free fly time material. I did not even know that you did that. So we oh, definitely yeah. did not next time. <laughs> yeah, definitely free fly time material. If I knew that, how great a pheasant tail was, when you guys drive through the like South Dakota, you could just go along the shoulder at one mile an hour and just pick them up and cut their tails off. They are <laughs> everywhere. We will bring back a couple for you. Yeah. Uh, what about historical landmarks? Like South Dakota, there's Wall Drug, there's Mount Rushmore, any Devil's Tower in Wyoming. 
you know, the giant ball of yarn somewhere? Are you going to be looking for these Paul Bunyan statue? So far, we, you know, the East Coast is pretty familiar to both of us. I think, you know, we drove through Boston. There's a lot of, you know, there's, we saw where the, the Tea Party happened and where the Boston Massacre was. We saw, like I said earlier, we saw the boat that like towed out the first nuclear sub or something in Connecticut. That was a mystic? Yes. Yeah. Um, that was that was a huge boat. So that was pretty cool. We've seen a couple other random historical landmarks, but nothing too big yet. You know, we're at Niagara right now, which is pretty cool. I've never been before. I think that's all the history so far, but I know there's a lot more of it out west. So any funny towns like here in Virginia, we have Bumpus. We have the Poe White Parkway. If you come across any just funny, bizarre signs. Oh, yeah. We, we saw one called Hecktown, and well, there's another one as well. We saw one called Mexico last night, and then another called Cuba. Cuba, we were, you know, we spent in Vermont, we spent a couple hours in Moscow. There's just, and then in, in like, Probably five out of the nine states, we have stayed in Newport. There's a Newport and then a St. Albans in pretty much every state. Interesting. It's pretty weird. Yeah. What about other than roadkill, things just on the side of the road? When, you know, we'll go on a, a steelhead trip, we'll count truck bombs or pee jugs on the side of the road. <laughs> we've seen a couple couches. A couple, we've, up north especially, people in their front yards just have like, old rusted cars from the 50s just parked on the grass which is pretty weird this one house had like five of them and yeah. one of them was impaled on a big metal spike oh, yeah. which was that was really weird <laughs> they like they like mounted their kill on the side of their house so a lot of old rusted cars a couple couches nothing crazy yet how are you avoiding the man and getting speeding tickets other than the man doesn't want to pull people over because of corona well we, so they're in Maine. The roads go from 70 to 25 in like 30 feet. So this one time we were driving through a town and I saw the 25 sign up ahead and started slowing down and was going like 35 and a cop decided to pull me over. But he, you know, he, he under, I don't really understand why he pulled me over because he pulled me over and he was like, Hey, I know the speed limit does that. Just telling you to slow down and then let me go. That was that cool. Was really weird. It was, it was cool. He was a fly fisherman. We talked to him a little bit about that. Uh, we actually, in Vermont, we had the cops called on us because we were sitting in a CVS parking lot and the sun was really bright and I was trying to call my dad. So I was lead, like hunched over the steering wheel and the cop came up to our window and was like, hey, just got reports of someone slumped over their steering wheel in a parking lot. Is that you guys? So that was that was an interesting encounter. I don't really know who called the cops on on someone sitting in their car in a CVS parking lot. It was lot. Karen. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely Karen. It was, Karen it did was it. Like 2 p.m. And Karen. we were only there for like 10 minutes and then like three cop cars rolled up. <laughs> so, I don't know. We, we haven't... And then we had one other... Oh, yeah. It was... We were in Delaware and we were like at a Wawa that was 24 hours and... Or it was in like a shopping center and we were parked like a bit away from the Wawa and a couple cops came up and they were like, are you guys doing okay? Um, and knocked on our window at like three in the morning, woke us up and we were pretty disoriented. And they were just like, hey, saw your car, just making sure you're fine. Right. I may have had a police officer open the door and grab my leg once. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I was after, I was, you'll find those nights in about three years. And you start going out. For us, we had a charter at like 5 a.m., so it was pretty much just our alarm. Yeah, but they woke us up, and actually, we tried to turn the um, oh, and, yeah. it, and the battery was dead. So oh no! Jump started, so it was actually that was pretty helpful. But you know, we've we've only had good encounters so far with cops. We haven't gotten we haven't gotten in trouble or anything like that. So we've been okay. Are there is there room in the car, and do you have the budget for souvenirs? Nothing big. The main problem would be the budget with that, I think, even yeah. though we don't have any room. Yeah. But. So, <laughs> you know, we haven't really, we have been to most of these states before or like, you know, up in Maine. I've never been to Maine before, but, you know, we were like in complete wilderness. There's not many souvenir stores. Might try and build a little bit of that into the budget out west. Um, I've never been there before, um, so that's going to be pretty cool. But 
you know, the souvenirs really for us are, are like the new kinds of fish we're catching and, and just the new places we're going. And, and that's been good enough. Okay. No, nope. you have to get like cowboy boots in Texas. Mm, might have to. That, like, might, uh, be, that might be necessary. Yeah. Yeah, and other than the dude, the sweaty guy, you just met characters. That's one thing I always love about road trips and just being out and about is you will maybe I just attract more of the cray. <laughs> but I've I've met some characters on the road before. We've ran into I don't know. We've had, you know, most of our interactions are like at tackle shops and and bait shops and or you know with we've had a couple <laughs> Yeah. So we had we've actually we pretty much only had positive experiences with people running bait shops you know they they tell us good spots to go and what to use except for one guy and we went in and we were trying to catch a striper and and he just wanted absolutely nothing to do with us <laughs> he did not want our business uh we were we told him we were catching a striper and and you know asked what bait and he was like live bait and we we're like, okay um what kind and he <laughs> You know, I how don't do, even know what was his problem. But. How do places stay in business? My neighbor, Brendan, he brought over his tiller from my garden t- so I could dig it up. And he was telling me about this lawnmower repair guy in Northern Virginia. And he called the guy. And he's like, hey, my tiller's not working. And the guy says, it probably needs gas. Called him a, a name and then hung up on him. <laughs> how, do, how, does that, how do you stay in business? Especially with Yelp and everything else. Oh yeah, we we haven't, but we definitely <laughs> contemplated leaving him a scathing review. Probably was just having a bad day. But we meet a lot of interesting people just through you know being at the fishing spots. Mainly the the sorts of people who are around at two a.m. under bridges yeah. <laughs> trying to catch striper, which tends to be an interesting type of person. Yeah, you guys might have to do a podcast and interview be- these people. That would be true. I think uh, we've definitely met a couple characters uh, out fishing at like three. That would be very interesting podcast guests. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of live bait, you haven't forgotten to take it out of the car or anything you've gotten in. You're not waking up in the morning like, dude, what'd you eat last night? You smell like herring. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, when we were uh, down in like Maryland, we used crabs and stuff like that. And that, you know, just being in the car for like an hour or two, that just doesn't smell good. That's Um, why you got to fly fish. (laughs) True. I'll convert you guys. I mean, if you want, I would love to learn. Um, We'll we'll get you casting when you come back to town. We'll get together. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. But besides that, you know, once we've been getting up North, especially for, you know, these, a lot of these fish just don't require live bait. So we haven't had too many problems with that. But definitely getting going, like right at the beginning, we were using some live bait, and the car did not smell wonderful. All right. Are you guys playing any pranks on each other? There's there's not enough time for that with how much we're fishing, I don't think. <laughs> well, so I broke Luke's rod yesterday, I think. But... Well, <laughs> that was an accident. So. I have one. I've got this old rod that's that you know was probably like a $30 rod that we just kind of threw in there. Do you guys yeah. want a bait caster rod? I, no. I, oh, <laughs> okay. So I was wanting a nicer rod um, for the trip. So right before we left, I went to Cabela's. And I was talking to this guy um, and he was, and I was like, do you guys have, you know, any spinning rods? And I told him really what I was looking for. And he was like, have you ever tried a bait caster? And I said, no. And he said, it's time that you learn. And so he kind of <laughs> just pressured me into buying one. And that has not been great (laughs) so that has been difficult i normally just stick to my spinning rod because it's just more frustrating than it is productive to use a bait caster at my skill level i'm trying i'm getting there i'm a little bit better than i was but i definitely need to do a lot more practicing that sounds like a chocolate lab it Uh, is good guess wow boom yeah impressive (laughs) thurman Thurman. Uh, my parents watch a British murder mystery show, and there was a guy named Thurman Merman. And they're like, who names their child Thurman Merman? The only other Thurman I know is the Thurman Cafe in Columbus. But you guys are Col- uh, Clemson guys. You don't want to know anything about Columbus, Ohio. Not at all. If yeah. they even play football this year. Big Ten starting up again. 
did they did that did that officially pass the vote? I have not seen uh, any games pop up my Google Calendar. I'm waiting for that. Okay. Fall is not the same. Clemson cleaned up 49-0 our last yeah. game. You know, ACC is pretty weak, so we've kind of got a a cakewalk to the finals. Hopefully. Are there a lot of kids from your school? You have a small school, so you probably won't know too many people down there. I know we. Uh, there's a couple people that I know from up here that are going. Like, I I don't know. I don't know that many people. Land in there. We've yeah. got a neighbor. She's pretty pissed that they're still charging out of state tuition. Yes. Yeah, that was one of the big reasons why we yeah. decided to defer because it's it is not a cheap school out of state. And it is definitely more productive to fish for a year and then actually go pay for actually, you know, pay for what we're getting instead right. of overpaying. Now, what if you meet a woman and fall in love and decide to stay in some small town somewhere? Uh, I think we're more interested in fishing. <laughs> I think that the pull of fish is probably a little bit stronger at this point. So no issues there. You know, they'll creep up, man. <laughs> They'll find you. I don't know. A big old, big old brook trout or something is yeah. pretty hard to beat. So yeah, what what else is uh what's next on the itinerary? Where are you headed from? Catching fish up there. Tomorrow we will head down to Pennsylvania, which, and then after that, West Virginia, and then <laughs> we'll uh, on our way back home in Virginia. We will uh, we'll do the state fish there. So that's three brook trout in a row right there. What There's are the, a lot of what are the brookies eating? What are you catching uh, them on? Right now, maps number zeros, and that has been working pretty well. We have not had any problems. We, we've only those. come up dry, I think, one day brook trout fishing. Yeah, if you you know if you find the right spot, we look for the we look for naturally reproducing streams because those ones all of the brook trout tend to be in. You know, they're not like in between areas of the creek. They're just in certain. They get so stuck in pools. And that used to be them. difficult run back in the day, had brook trout. Really? Yeah, all through Oakton. Wow. All that. That's pretty upsetting that that doesn't happen anymore. So, <laughs> so you guys are not experiencing one of the greatest things in the world in fishing, which is catching a brook trout on top on a little dry fly. Mm. You know, I... <laughs> My friend and his dad um, are pretty into fly fishing, and they have said that they're going to come out and do Virginia with me um, on the fly. You know, it definitely, I'm looking forward to that. But I just, you know, I've, I've, I really have not been introduced to fly fishing yet. You know, uh, not too many people fish for, for catfish on the fly. Uh, largemouth bass is, is pretty good on spinning tackle. So most of the fish that I catch just don't really necessitate it. But with all the trout that I'm going to, we're going to have to be catching, you know, might as well start getting proficient at fly fishing is definitely something that would be pretty helpful. So yeah. we'll teach you guys to tie your own fly too, before you leave, we'll work on that. It's not that hard. Any knowledge that we can get, we will take. <laughs> Very cool. What are you looking forward to most other than the fish in the, the upcoming roadie? For me, Montana. I'm super excited to to see Yellowstone. Yeah, neither of us have gone out west, really. I mean, no, I haven't at all. I don't know if Luke has at all, but yeah, neither of us have been to Yellowstone. That's definitely going to be really fun. Yellowstone, Glacier. seeing all the Great Lakes. We saw two today. We saw Erie, and uh, actually looking out our window right now, we can see Ontario. You guys um, might get a salmon tomorrow. We, yeah, we. I don't know. We weren't planning to fish here, but um, we made good time in New York. So maybe if the pull is too strong, we will stay, but probably not. And don't go get the buffalo wings at Anchor Bar. I heard those people are obnoxious. <laughs> we'll take that advice. Um, that's probably a little bit over our budget. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, I don't think my brother and I ate at any restaurants. He liked to eat at Denny's and read the USA Today. Wow. And I was like, that, dude, we got driving to do. He's like, oh, I got to finish my three orders of hash browns. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. When we were in the Badlands, he ate two foot-long Subway sandwiches. Because back then, every time you got a 6-inch or 12-inch, you'd get a stamp. And if you collected, say, 10 stamps, you got a free foot-long. That would be so very So the more helpful. Subway you ate, the more 
free sandwiches you would get. So he would eat free sandwiches. Yeah, I don't know that either of us are crushing two foot longs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one is good enough. What is your order at Subway these days? Um, I my go to is spicy Italian on Italian herbs and cheese, and then you basically just put every vegetable in there on it and some honey mustard, salt and pepper, and that fills you up pretty good. Remember, yeah, my, mine used to be quite basic, but as the trip has progressed, we just kind of start throwing everything on there to <laughs> fill us up. At Roy Rogers, you can make a whole side salad at the Fixins Bar. They even have a Fixins Bar left. Really? Yeah, I, I love the old Roy's at Tyson's when I was a kid. Yeah. We haven't passed any Roy Rogers yet. I don't think so. I'm excited for when I go south or when we go south, cookout. Because you can get a good meal for $5 there, and it's just the best food. I'm game for that. Maybe that's where I'll meet you guys. Yeah. All right. I don't, yeah, come with Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. I think North Carolina is also a brook shot, actually. So – Maybe we'll do a little fly fishing there. We'll just have to put my kid in the back seat of my car with <laughs> Wi-Fi so she can go to school. Yeah, we've actually one of uh one of our buddies is has been trying to convince his parents that because school is online, he doesn't need to be at home and he can come fishing with us. And so far that hasn't worked, but I don't know. Maybe with a little bit more convincing he'll be allowed to come. Yeah. Any road trip movies you guys have watched in preparation? Not really. Um, I haven't wa- watched anything, really. I've been Dumb- watching a lot of River Monsters on yeah. YouTube. Have you guys watched Dumb and Dumber? We actually – so we <laughs> we stayed with a family uh, that we know near Philadelphia on our way up, and we got this question from their nine-year-old daughter, and she was absolutely shocked when she found out that we had not watched it. What? She told us that we needed to come back for movie night. So we haven't seen that. Um, and what? Charlotte, I'm sorry. We'll do better next time. Oh, my goodness. That's your homework tonight. <laughs> All right, guys. Anything I forgot to ask in probably part one of this road trip podcast shenanigan? Um, uh, I think just, you know, you can follow along with us on Instagram. It's Luke underscore fish 50. Um, and then it's Luke fish 50 on Facebook. Um, and the GoFundMe is linked on both of those. And I am going to put the link to my fish brain in my Instagram bio so you can follow along there as well. I think you pretty much covered everything. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, give me a shout when you are back in Nova. Absolutely. Sounds good. Right on, Thank guys. So All right, dudes. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. Bye. Thank you for joining us for the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. For more information or to contact Rob, please go to www.robsnowwhite.com. This podcast is brought to you by Freestone Productions at freestoneproductions.com.